Brian Wagner, um, do you think that maybe Lori Valadebel will argue in front of this jury that she was brainwashed by Chad Daybell and his his beliefs and all this zombie stuff, and then her him, Chad and her brother basically had some sort of control over her that she just couldn't break out of? Thanks for having me, Vinny. I, I really hope not. If I'm her defense attorney, I really do not want her getting up there and testifying because then you just open up a whole bag of worms. But more importantly, if I'm her, what I'm talking about, or as a defense, what I'm talking about is that she didn't have the mental intent to actually commit these crimes. You don't need to actually go into the details. Just let the confusion sit with the jury and hope the prosecutor doesn't meet their burden of proof. You know, Josh, uh, from the beginning, I mean, the reaction to this woman, and, and I think it's the same reaction a jury's going to have, is they're going to be scratching their heads and trying to figure out why and how could she possibly do this? I mean, J little JJ's a special needs child. This, was, this, this little guy needed even extra attention. And then her daughter, who, who was her protector, I mean, her daughter stood by her side when, when police would talk to her. She would speak to them and sort of help her mom out, almost realizing that her mom had some, had some issues that she was dealing with. But to me, it's a mother and her children. And, and to me, the, the, the reaction is always the same. How can you do this? How could you do this? What is the explanation? The American justice system specifically allows you to be completely mentally ill and culpable. We can find you guilty even with a mental illness. I think it's shameful that Idaho doesn't have a really nice mental uh, illness, not guilty by reason of insanity defense, but at the same time, you are allowed in the American judicial system to get convicted all day with a host of mental illnesses. And what I think is going to happen is the state is going to double down if the defense goes the mental health route and show that, sure, she was swept up in love. She fantasized about all these end of world doomsday scenarios. But at the end of the day, she killed her kids or at least was involved with the death of her kids. And then we're going to get over to whether she's going to flip or not. If she's competent enough now to stand trial, is she competent enough to provide evidence against her co-defendants? Plus, we still don't know what charges are even going to come out. There's a lot more coming up on this story. There's a lot more. Brian, how, do you see the mental state of Lori Valadebel being any different than Chad? Because they both have this, this doomsday belief. Um, originally, the story was July 22nd, which has come and gone, and we're all still here, right? I'm still in my basement. Uh, then there's talk that maybe it's August of 2020. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it, we'll see in September, right? Uh, but do you think there's a different mental state for these two, the husband and the wife, the guru and the follower? I don't, because ultimately, Lori Vallow Daybell is not going to be able to argue duress. And that's really what you're talking about, is that I did this because I was forced by my, at this point, my second husband. I, I don't see how that defense could possibly come. Wait, in. wait, wait, it, wait, 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 wait. Got to correct you, Brian. I got to add three. It's husband number five. Number five. Go ahead. Continue. But, yeah, I mean, there's there's no way she's going to be able to argue that I am being forced to do this by my husband number five. If that was the case, you'd expect mountains of other evidence where she's calling 911, where she's being forced into this cult of, cult of mind, and you just don't have that. So that's a really uphill battle for her to try to go. All right, when we come back, Eklund Mercy will be fired up on 